Looking through job advertisements is an occasional activity in some countries. In Peru, it's often a hopeless ritual, an occupation in itself. Eight million Peruvians are legally old enough to work, but only one in five has a steady job. One of the most thriving sectors is the money-changing market. An annual inflation rate of 3,000% has made the national currency almost worthless. United States dollars are traded openly in the street. Boards help interested parties locate the dealers and work at a hectic pace. Everyone is involved in a desperate rush for money with some purchasing value. The aim is simply to survive. The police know it and gaze on passively. Some Peruvians are wealthy, but they are very much a privileged minority. Statistics show that only 1% of the population owns up to 40% of the country's wealth. Not for them the frantic life of Lima's populous districts. They can get away from it all in splendor and seclusion on their own private beach at their favorite club with time to savor their leisure. They're the last of a long line of plutocrats which started before the Spanish conquest when Peru's riches were envied far and wide. Not so today. Street vendors peddling their wares crowd all the pavements of the capital. Carts and stalls selling anything and everything block the entrances to shops. The government has failed to incorporate the flood of mainly Andean Indian migrants to the cities, so they've taken the initiative. It's not just because the lights don't work that traffic grinds to a halt. Traders get in the way too. Car windscreen cleaners and entrepreneurs with a taste for dubious art distract the driver's attention and contribute to the chaos. Meanwhile, the old and the disabled have little choice. The government of President Alberto Fujimori has no money to maintain social services, so begging is often a necessary option. Those in work often need more than one job. Taxi drivers have been hit by a 20% hike in the price of fuel. Peru's proud past used to attract vast numbers of foreign visitors. Not anymore. Tourists have been scared off by a nationwide outbreak of cholera. The economic repercussions are catastrophic. The government cannot even provide basic services. Only half the population has access to piped water. The other half relies on public facilities, which are often polluted by seepage from sewage systems. Shanty towns are encroaching further and further on Lima and most other cities. Peru once had a strong agricultural base, but the 10-year guerrilla war led by the Sendero Luminoso movement has triggered massive migration from the countryside. Whole families struggle to survive here without the basic minimum. Government warnings that drinking water must be boiled are pointless when people cannot afford the necessary fuel. For children, playing is a rare occasion. Somehow it delays a while tomorrow's grim reality. Their parents work hard at improving their surroundings. Life was difficult in the rural areas they left behind. Having made the decision to settle here, they are prepared to make the best of their circumstances. They've brought with them their traditions and their resourcefulness. Their farming skills have enabled them to develop an alternative economy in the tiny space they've carved out for themselves. There is enough to feed the family, and the surplus can be sold. <laughs> Following long-established customs, the men often seek work in the city center, while the women retain the domestic role. And children have a prominent place in the homemaking process. However, the government's latest austerity measures designed to curb inflation have hit hard. The worst has been the elimination of state food subsidies. To counter further hardship, families have organized themselves and run communal kitchens to save money on cooking. On taking office just over a year ago, President Fujimori pledged to help the poorest survive. To offset the effect of the cutbacks, the authorities created an emergency food aid program to provide relief for an estimated 10 million destitute Peruvians. The program was to be run via soup kitchens, religious organizations, and neighborhood groups 
to give each needy child a free glass of milk a day. A year on, community groups say they only get a fraction of the help they require. They say aid is disorganized and resources are insufficient. A meal consists mainly of rice with a few vegetables and a small portion of meat or fish. Despite the problems, the soup kitchens give the needy a chance to eat. Regular meetings are held to discuss budget constraints. A small fee for each meal supplements the meager government contribution. In the wake of the cholera epidemic, foreign countries have banned all imports of fresh produce from Peru. But Peruvians have no choice. Local vegetable markets provide most of what they can afford to buy. Shantytown dwellers have set up their own infrastructure. It bypasses the formal sector where wages can only purchase a third of what they could buy 15 years ago. The cholera epidemic has highlighted the failure of the state to provide health care, the most basic of needs. It has also exacerbated Peru's endemic poverty.